Love your story, Peter. From Kenya, was working at a private school and decided to leave that private school to give his talents to children who were not getting the same level of education that, it, that we're getting at the private school. This particular area he worked in had suffered under very severe conflict in 2007. It was very violent. Many of those kids were traumatized, families were traumatized. You started a peace club. You also teach the adults if they want to learn anything about agriculture, whatever it is. You started a science club. And the kids who worked with you with hardly any materials went on to win the major prize in Africa for the best science prize. That was because of you, Peter. Oh yeah, welcome back to Jeff Kanange live here in the studio. And if there's ever a time we needed some inspiration, this is it. And Peter Tabiji has provided just that for us. 36 years old, he's just been declared the global teacher of the year in a huge award. 10,000 teachers across the world had applied for it. There were 10 finalists, one African amongst the 10, and the winner, Peter Tabichi. Welcome to Jeff Kinenga Live, my friend. Thanks so much. We're proud of you, man. I mean, I can't tell you enough how proud we are. When they announced your name, because Hugh Jackman there was saying, and the winner is, and you know, there's 10 of you. You're the only African, let's face it. Yeah. Did you think you, were, did you, think you could win it? You would win it? No, that was not in mind. I didn't expect it. Yeah. Yes, at all, at all. And then he says, he said, Peter Tabachi. Well, he missed me. <laughs> <laughs> he missed me. Yeah, he said Tabachi. Yes. And you heard your name. Yep. How did you feel? Excitement. At first, I could not believe it. <laughs> but and then when I saw people, all the eyes are on me. <laughs> yes. And then I, I, I see, I, I, it was a confirmation, it is me. Yeah. And then I move, I had to move forward. Yes. Because we had been given a procedure on how to. How to move or how, what yes, to do. So, uh -huh. it was a great moment. Not just for me, but for those learners that I teach. Yes. Uh, for the teachers who struggle mm. in those uh, those areas require work. Yes. Not just Kenya, even the whole all of Africa. Yeah. Those kids we saw at the airport, Monica. I don't know if you have those pictures. Those kids at the airport were those from from your school? Yes. They were. Yes. Oh man. Oh man. It was uh, beautiful pictures. Yeah, I think they are full of excitement yeah. you see they came all the way from nakuru yes i don't know i just like was surprised to see them there yeah. it was like a surprise to me yeah yeah and they were full of energy and we saw you kiss the ground like the pope yeah why um because i'm a broad african okay proud to be a kenyan that's way, one way of uh, really showing patriotism eh? yeah. um, that our motherland is, we really respect it. So yeah. I was so happy that where I come from, okay, it is this place where I come from has really made me rise to where I am. I hope you don't change, huh? I won't. Don't change. I won't. Stay humble. <laughs> Thanks. Stay the way you are. Thanks. Now tell me, you come from a family of teachers, right? Yep. Your dad is a was a teacher. Was a teacher. Uncles, teachers. Yes. Your sister yes. is a lecturer. Yes. Right? Yeah. So is this what you wanted to do growing up? You said, I want to be a teacher. Yes, because um, I saw the great work they do in the community. And especially my, my dad inspired me a lot because of what he was doing. Every evening I could watch him, what he's doing. And, and he also he happened to inspire so many people. And he raised you single-handedly because your mother died yes. when you were very young, right? Unfortunately, um, we lost our mother when I was at the age of 11. Yeah. But um, through struggles and... Uh, he was a courageous man, a very strong Christian. Yeah. He managed to really take care of us, educating us, yeah. doing everything. Was he strict? Was he tough on you? Um, I can say that um, 
He's just a good man. <laughs> Very strict. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But Wave the way, his pots, uh, you have done something yeah. or you have messed up somewhere. Yes. You just point it out. By the way, uh, he was with you in Dubai. Exactly. He was in the crowd. He was. Monica, do we have that shot? He was in the crowd and you called him to the stage. Yes, I had to because I know he's the man behind all uh, the achievement. Yeah. Okay, we also have other people. Yes. But take a I look, knew. Take a look. Take a look at this, Peter. Yeah. Monica, where's that Papa. shot? Papa. Papa, please. Stand up. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Papa, you call him. He has been an energetic man all through. He's still old, but not old. Very strong. <laughs> Does much. I appreciate him. Thanks so much. Oh. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Just to let you know, uh, Peter's dad is is here in the studio. Is in the house. We're going to be bringing him a little later on, but you know. I'm almost in tears just seeing that, man. I mean, it's just so, it's incredible. It's, what a moment. What a moment. Seeing your dad, calling him on stage, and he's the reason you are where you are. Because um, I wanted that to be part of my story. Because when I was uh, doing all this, I was perspiring because at the back of my mind, I knew that it was part of that story. Mm. Therefore, I did intentionally because I knew that I knew I was aware of that. Yes. Yes. Was it a difficult upbringing? Was was it tough growing up? Yes, it was tough because imagine is the one preparing uh, meals, doing everything. For how many of you? Um, for like a period of uh, ten years. But how many children? Uh, we are eight. Wow. But. Yep, eight. Eight. Yep. That's a tough job. Mm. Tough job. Mm. And you decided you wanted to be a teacher. Yes. And because uh -huh. I, what he was doing was great, and uh, I really was inspired. And uh, I thought that teaching profession is really a great work. Yeah. Yes. You wanted to so make it. just recently, I, when I after training, and then I was kind of hearing from comments from people and others complaints that hey, this is hard, it's hard. Teaching is not for me. Yes. So I was wondering, when I'm enjoying teaching and wondering people, complaints and <laughs> yeah. uh, all sorts of uh, things, the stuff people talking about sure. teaching profession. And uh, speaking of professions, when you first started out, you were in a private school, right? Yes. In a private school? I was working in a private so school. So the money was good, the life was good. I mean, you, it was good. What made you switch to public? Okay, um, that school where I was, uh, the, the private school um, had uh, like private students. And then um, the conditions somehow were favorable, like now they had good internet. Yeah. And even teachers could enjoy eh, Wi Fi free. Mm. Uh, you don't, okay, pay for it. Yes. But then one time when I was given an invitation to visit the nearby schools, I was touched by what I saw. They, don't have, they, they didn't have facilities, uh, no, no enough teachers, yeah. all sorts of problems you can imagine of yes. those. Sections. Poor schools, yes. poverty. Yeah. So that touched my heart. I said, the following year, I should do something. I should either initiate a project or even join there. Start. And that's what I did. So the following year, that was the year 2015, I saw an advert from uh, the Teacher Service Commission. I applied and I happened to get it. We were like 30 uh, people who applied, uh -huh. but I happened to get that. Yeah. So, and you, I'm sure you were the only one who applied from a private school to this. I'm sure you were. It could be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When did you start giving your salary away? Um, as Franciscan brothers, I'm, I'm a Franciscan brother. By the way, explain what Franciscan brother is. 
Um, this is a religious organization within the Catholic Church who follow the footsteps of St. Francis, if you know St. Francis. St. Francis of Assisi. What do you know about St. Francis? I know Francis? the prayer. I know Which the one? prayer. No, if there's no, any no, no. prayer I know, uh -huh. it's the prayer of St. Francis. Can you, can you? It, it goes something like this, if uh -huh. I can remember from 35 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't know it. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. You mean? Where there is hatred, let me sow love. <laughs> Where there is injury, pardon. Wow. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. hope. Where there is darkness, light. light. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as, as to, to console, console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. Now, that uh, part. Pause, you pause. That part, eh? it is in giving, giving that we receive. It is now, in pardoning. And that's what um, I'm doing. Uh -huh. That's what I've been doing to the society, to the learners that I am yes. currently uh, teaching. Yes. So giving, okay? And then someone may ask about 80%. Yes. You get it from there. The idea is just around there. Um, you asked about when I uh, started, started giving. giving. As uh, Sir, I've, I've told you that I'm a Franciscan brother, our way of life is a life of simplicity and um, humility. Yeah. Uh, serving the marginalized, uh, the poor people, that's, that's in our hearts. It's right. what we do. It's our way of life. So, so material things mean nothing to you? Uh, no. What matters is um, what you, what you, the, the lives that you change, yeah. that's what matters, not what you possess. Right. Exactly. Because none of this, you're, you're not going to take any of it with you, eh? No. Even when you make someone smile, when you, when I see you smiling, yeah. it doesn't matter whether it's a humor or what, that's what gives me happiness. Yes. And then, when you give us from the prayer, yes. you also receive. And that's why I believe in those five, the, the, around, uh, the, yeah. my beliefs are, are around there. Those five, in case five people five. Have, don't think that I, have, that I know the rest of the prayer, it is in giving that we receive. Okay. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born, born to eternal, eternal life. life. Amen. <laughs> you should come and join us. <laughs> <laughs> brother Jeff. <laughs> yes, yes. You'll be an excellent brother and yeah. you'll do yeah. perfect uh, one. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I, I like material things. So, uh, I, uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> My goodness. So th that's where the giving came from, huh? Yes, exactly. So the hundred million shillings you've just been given, yep. which is going to come in bits, that we understand, it's going to come in exactly in ten million of ten times. Yes. What are you going to do with this money? I mean, everybody's asking. By the way, a lot of people are asking for loans, eh, or gifts, or donations, or inside <laughs> here. I'm sure there are relatives who have come out of the woodworks. What when Akuliza Abe Nani usi tu sahau? Yep. Is that happening? That is very true. <laughs> now, in this case, there is some uh, kind of a symbol here of what I have won. Yes. I don't want to say that I'm the best teacher, but I can say that I've won. This one represents other teachers, eh? their struggles. It is an achievement of teachers. It is the teachers who have won. It is the students, my students that I teach who have won. Not just, not just the students in Kiriko, but also students even in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it's also beyond the students in Kenya. Students can talk of like now we can widen that. In Africa, who are each and every day struggling and um, uh, they really from their struggles and going through challenges, yeah. be able to 
th there's some hope they achieve they achieve something yeah uh, the same applies to the teachers working like the areas where i work it doesn't matter where they work okay working in those marginalized areas others also working even in uh, mega cities yes. those big cities yeah. of course there are also challenges even sure. those sure. big cities okay but, uh, those are the ones who have won. So if they have won, um, I'm very sure this is meant for them, not, not even for me. In fact, I'm just like their voice representing. OK, is, yeah. that, is that the same with the money? Yes. But now, let me ask you now this. Now that let they me, are the ones who have won, yes. now that they are the ones who have won, mm. students, teachers, yeah. the community, I also include now the community, so you're going they're to, the ones who will deserve this. Are you going to donate more of the money? Yes. They're gonna, the ones, because they are the ones who have won, they are the ones who will deserve So you're going to donate yes. a big chunk of the money. Yes. Let me ask you, do you, how far away from school do you live? How far? Uh, like uh, eight, eight kilometers. Eight kilometers. Yeah. How do you get to school? Do you I, want, do I, I use a motorbike. You have a motor, you have, have a doody? Uh, yeah, and also a bicycle. Uh, yeah. A bicycle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> were, were you thinking, you know, if, if I was you, would you would you want a car? A car. Yeah. You, uh, okay. You may have the personal needs. Eh? Yes. But the most important thing is uh, putting the priority of these people who have won first. Now you see, that's why I would never be one of you guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, the first thing I would walk into the dealership in Batia Imbili. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> See, that won't take you anywhere. That's the it's, difference between uh, mm. you and us, man. Mm -hmm. That's why you're the champion. That's why you're the hero, man. With me? <laughs> ha, ha. Leo, Leo. Let me read a couple of tweets, okay? Because this show is for you guys, okay? I want you yeah. guys to be as part of a show as, as, as I, have, I am because Peter is our hero, all of us. So, Nyargero, Nyargero says, my question to Peter Kabiji is, what really inspires you to go the extra mile to do the work you're doing and achieve so much in a profession that appears to be downtrodden by many? Teaching is not a profession which many people respect. What makes you go that extra mile, she's asking. I believe it is passion. Yeah. Having passion can... Uh Passion in what you are doing can really make you do th great things. Yeah. Yes. Passion. That is the that will give uh, give you that energy. Yeah. Now you teach mathematics and physics. Uh, yes. Right. Yes. Those are your two specialties. Exactly. Wow. E equals M C squared. <laughs> exactly. That's all I learned in physics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Herman Kamariki, you say, this man Mokaya is a real representation of the saying that. Teaching is a call or calling. What are the challenges he has gone through as a teacher? Greatest challenge you've gone through as a teacher? Uh, where I teach, uh, the school is uh, really in a very remote area and um, they don't have facilities and we don't have enough teachers. Uh, we uh, teach uh, learners who come from very poor backgrounds. They have all sorts of, you see, when they come from those backgrounds, yes. they have all sorts of stress. Yes. And imagine teaching such like learners. So those are some of the challenges which are before us as teachers yeah. that we have to handle. We can't say that now this is too much, too, this is too heavy for us. Yeah. Just face them. And I, I understand what you're saying. Kids with so many problems coming into school, problems. whether it's personal issues, yeah. home issues, yes. fees issues. All of those. And you still have to mold them. And you have to. You have to. Yeah. Because um, they, 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 they are, they are your clients, clients when you go to school. Mm. Not, not, even, um, not, uh, not even think about what you are going to get yeah, yeah. they're your clients they are, yeah 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 exactly so um, when you give your pest when you out of your passion you yeah. do your pest and i think that's what is going to matter more. tell me something peter um who nominated you how did you hear about this award 
Um, in the first place, I didn't know anything about competitions. But I was inspired by one person. We have so many Kenyans who have much potential. Yeah. And youth, they have potential. Okay. So back to the one who inspired me is uh, we have a Kenyan called Wangari Mathai. Mm -hmm. The late Wangari Mathai. Yes. And then I was reading the story that she won something. And then I was also like, is there something similar to that? Mm -hmm. And then a friend at Adorso uh, told me that there is a, a com such a kind of a competition. Okay. I did, myself, I was not aware of it. And then looking at the, web, the website of this, uh, this um, Global Teacher Prize, I saw it was something fantastic yeah. and that I say I have to participate. Yes. But I, at the back of my mind, money was not what was there. No. I knew that I'll just participate and I'll be able to get the experience, I'll be able to really, um, uh, like, explore. Yeah, so you apply? I have, yes. And so did 10,000 other teachers? Yes, you, so you make an application, you narrate, you have to give you a story. Mm -hmm. And then you have to get some people to nominate you. Correct. Can be your fellow teachers, friends, your students, all, all of that. And then the next step is you submit the application. Mm -hmm. Of course, it is a, a wide kind of, a lot of work, not yeah. just a single document. No. You send even videos, you have to attach photos. Everything that you say that you, are doing, you have to, there must be an evidence. And of course, in Kenya, we have something similar to that. And I'm very, uh, even Kenyans are also very um, creative. And we have something called Toya Aitoya. I don't know where they have uh, that. No. Yeah. The, whereby each and every year they get the best teacher of the year. They are given oh, awards. Right. We also have it in Kenya. But now, this Kenya, and then now this one is global. global. Yes. So from there, they look at your application everything that you have submitted, and then they shortlist. Mm. But now in this case, so many people made Applied. an application. 10,000 10, uh, nominations and applica uh, applications. Yeah. Tell me yeah. something. Yeah. By the time you were going to Dubai, yeah. did you know you had been shortlisted? Yes, I knew. You knew you were amongst the 10? Because the first uh, list, the normally list the first list in uh, the, the the first list was released in December last year. Uh -huh. the top fifty. Top fifty in the world. Yes. You were amongst it, obviously. Yes. Top fifty uh, in the world, eh? from uh, all corners of the world. Yeah. Ten were from Africa, uh -huh. like nine or ten. Eh? Yeah. From Africa, and I was one of them. And then February this year. Uh, they gave out another list of top 10 now. From 50 now, narrowed down to 10. 10. Now, I happen to be in that list. I could not believe it. Even the first one, yes. I did not mention. Yes. I did not, I could not believe it. I just saw it and then I... And the second like, one, you're there. I was still there. Which now, one? this time around, yes. top 10, I was the only one from Africa Correct. now. The presenting is like now. Yeah. I saw <laughs> hey. the others. The US, UK, yes. yeah. Brazil, Argentina, El Australia. Wow. Kazakhstan or some other place <laughs> down there. Yeah. yeah. And then there was just you, Japan. Yes, yes, and yes. You. So, and then so, I was just, am I really, really, really the best? But wait I a was minute. asking, th okay. that was a question. Don't, as jump, as don't jump yet. <laughs> so you, you're, you're top 10. Top 10. And they send you an email or whatever they say, yes. Peter, we want you in Dubai yes. in March. Yeah. Peter, you have no passport. You have never flown in your life. Exactly. Right? It, it's very true. Yes. It was my first, it was really a great moment. Hmm? <laughs> great moment for me, the first flight. Getting onto a plane. Yes. How Getting was it? All... Explain it to me. Um, I enjoyed it the whole trip. But um, it, it is approved all what exaggerations from people. You know, they tell you when you went to the plane, yes. you will shaking and what you have to get a belt yes. around you. So yes. there wasn't something. I enjoyed the whole trip. There was no shaking. Old, no shaking. Yeah. So, so, so you get to Dubai. <laughs> yes. 
And I'm going to tell you this for a fact, Peter. Dubai is like nowhere else on the planet. Wow. I went to places like, I can't believe. Yeah, you I, think I've you're... Never, you think I you're, went to the tallest, they call it the tallest, tallest yes. building in the world. Burj Al Arab or whatever it's called, right? <laughs> the Burj. Burj Khalifa. Right? Yeah. Yes. So I just saw um, uh, fantastic things, like huh? incredible. <laughs> no, I, so I, 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 I agree. I mean, you must yeah. have been like staring at these buildings and saying, I'm, "Yes, have I died?" Most of the time. Uh, but the way is, someone gave me a present of a, a kind of like a camera. So each and every point, I could take photos. And yes. People were wondering, could take even photos of everything because it was so nice, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then yeah. the night of the awards yeah. and the sheikh is there yeah. Prince uh, Al Maktoum eh? Mohammed <laughs> bin uh, Rashid Al Maktoum yes. he's there I mean the, 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 the Dubai the ruler yes. and his team they're all there Imagine. they're all there and you're on stage yes what's going through your mind um I, what was in my mind is that I'm really representing someone. Not I'm just I'm not I'm not I was I was not there just because of my my because of myself because of um, what uh, my students are doing. Mm -hmm. they, achieve, they are the ones like who are the ones who, are, who have made me. Yeah. If I was not teaching that school, yeah. I could not have gone there. To there Dubai. you go. If you were in the private school that you yes. left. Yes. You probably would never have made it. Okay, so they announce you as the winner. And then mm. Hugh Jackman, the MC, he says, Peter, wait a minute. Before I hand over the mic to you, there's a message for you. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And then? Surprise. Who comes up? Our president. <laughs> I was so... I could not believe it. Uh? Monica, do we have that? <laughs> Monica, what are you waiting for? On behalf of all Kenyans, let me congratulate you on winning the Global Teacher Prize for this year. Were you shocked? Was that surprising? You was that? are a shining example. Yes, I was. Of what the human spirit can achieve, not just for Kenya, not just for Africa, but for the world. Mm. Uh, Peter, you chose to teach in a remote part of Kenya. Keriko Mixed Day Secondary School. And you chose to transform lives in such situations, a choice that I'm sure was difficult. Yeah. I saw a tear. Yes, tears because uh, our president had a very powerful message. Mm. And I was so happy. He had a message uh, for Kenyans, and not only for Kenyans, even for everyone in Africa. Mm. Uh, it was quite amazing. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The yeah. whole thing is unbelievable. I, yeah. I, man. Mm. So you finish your speech, and then what happened after that? You took pictures, of course. You're taking pictures with your fellow teachers. Yes. And then what did you do afterwards? Was there a party? Was there a celebration? Was there alcohol? I mean, I mean was there uh, dancing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are so many other, but I, I didn't. I, um, immediately after the celebration, yes. we were the, the kind of the press. Oh yes, we are like well, struggling. Everyone want, wanted to take a photo, and they were like not just in terms of tens. Of, I don't know. There were so many of them. Yes. yes, they all wanted a piece of you. Yes. So from that time, it was around, around what seven in the evening. Yes, up to around eleven, interviews, what? interviews, interviews. One after the other. Yes. Oh yeah. And then, of course, there was there was a celebration, mm -hmm. but, uh, but during that celebration, I was a bit tired. I'm sure because of those four yeah. hours of interviews, nonstop. Goodness. 
from you, all, not just from Kenya, yes. not from Africa, from all corners of the world. Yeah. They want to know, they want to hear what from me. My God. <laughs> you know, when I saw you, I saw that, uh, the, the video, um, you, the only African amongst the 10 finalists. Yeah. I said to myself, my goodness, mm. this is incredible. Yeah. And then, and the winner is this sole figure there from the continent representing 1.2 billion people yeah was you exactly was you and all because of this man who raised you well yeah lawrence where's lawrence badrock of vip hola <laughs> all right we're gonna get your dad in it's okay so we could t talk to him a little he's, bit as well he's a hero he's a hero no doubt and yes, you are too just man. respect oh. parents do yeah. great things yeah. if your mother was alive today how would she feel oh my gosh i don't know i can't imagine where she is right now you think she's smiling at smiling us? i'm very sure yeah yes she's saying mom ma that's my boy yeah that's exactly. my boy very proud i'm very sure that's happening oh yeah <laughs> oh man heaven must be missing an angel oh peter to beat you there global hero teacher of the year his dad is coming up after the break stay tuned keep tweeting what are your comments what are your questions to peter here where do we go from here 36 years old folks and he's done something no other african has ever done I just want to have a positive impact, not only in my country, even the whole of Africa. Caring for people is in my heart. We need peace in our communities. We need peace in our world. To be a great teacher, you have to do more and talk less. Do more and talk less. Welcome back to Jeff Kunange Live here at Citizen Television. My goodness, what a show we're having today. Peter Tabichi, Global Teacher of the Year. You saw that confidence look. He was walking on stage like a man on a mission. And probably the reason why he has all that confidence is because of this man here in the middle. That's his dad, Lawrence Tabichi. Yes. Yes, good, good to see you. Very good. You were also a teacher. Yes, I was a teacher. Yes. For many years. I taught you 32 years. 32 years? Yes. Wow. Is that what inspired you, Peter? Exactly. This man? Yes. He was energetic, and even right now he's very energetic. Yes. Eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doing great work. Yeah. How old are you, Mze, if I may ask? How, how old are you? I'm 67. Oh. And now your son is the global teacher of the year. We thank God for that. And you were there in the room. You were there when, when they announced it. Yes, I was there when he was presented with this prize. Yes. How did you feel? In fact, I felt extremely happy and uh, I marveled. It was so marvelous. Yeah. And uh, what made me more feel more happy is Excellency, the President yes. of our country, yes. the beloved Uru Muigai Kenyatta yes. spoke. You heard him speaking. Yes, I saw him on the screen. Yeah. So I was thrilled. Go on, I'm listening, I'm waiting. <laughs> After being thrilled, yeah. I, because I am a, I love God, I like, I am a man of piety. I thanked God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Jesus, you love us all. Jesus, I trust you. Even my daughter, we were sitting with my daughter. I heard her also speaking the same way. She had tears of joy. Mm. And your son, Peter, also had tears of joy. I saw you on stage. You had yeah. tears of yeah. joy. Yeah. Yes. I could not control it. Mm. My God. This is incredible, man. Incredible. I don't know, I don't know if you realize what this boy of yours has achieved. Uh, I could not believe whether he is my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before that, I was doubting. Will he really repeat this 
kleine European is. Yeah, exactly. That's he what was I was thinking. He was only the black man. Yes. All the rest of Muzungus <laughs> on that stage. Yes. The Muzungus. Yes. There's no way he can win. I thought I was doubt, but I, but I, as I'm a, I'm a man of prayer, I trusted, I trusted everything to Jesus Christ. You're gonna make us all start crying now, okay? Mm. Pole pole. Eh? Yeah. To Tanzania, see, kill him too, eh? How was he when he was growing up? Was he a good boy? Was he a good child? Well, he started showing his talents while young, mm -hmm. even from seven years. What talent? From the way, the way he was acting things, I predicted this young boy might become a scientist because he was mending things technically. A bad lock which is spoiled, he could mend it. Mm -hmm. A radio which does not uh, give a message properly, he could mend it. And then he could join bulbs to go to enlighten uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. So you, you, by that, I predict that you could be an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Just as we are now. An electrical engineer. Yes, <laughs> yes. So from my prediction, when I was looking at this science lessons or uh, books, I could see that he, he excelled. Then after in the second school, he excelled. Even the Edgerton University, he excelled. He excelled. Wow. So he was uh, the most wonderful son I had. Oh. Even others have talents, yes. but he has, he, had, he has more talents than, than them. Than the others. Mm. Exceptional. Mm. Uh, others have got talents, of course. Sure, sure. He, especially the eldest son, and then the youngest daughter. Uh -huh. yeah. I, call it, I call them geniuses. Wow. But he, he is more genius. <laughs> Because he, he satisfied me with yeah. his passing examinations. Yeah. If your wife was alive today, if his mother was alive, yes. what, how, how, what do you think sh she would be saying? I think we, we, when people marry each other, they have got the same minds. They can't come together unless they, they have got the same minds. Mm -hmm. So she could share my feelings. She would be happy as I am, I was happy. As, and still, I'm, I'm happy now. Yeah. Mm. Peter, yeah. what is the best advice somebody ever gave you, whether it's your dad <coughs> or someone else? What's the best advice you ever got? Um, that you have to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. that you have to know that you have a potential irrespective of your situation, challenges that you are facing, that you, you should not surrender, okay, give up in yeah. case of you feel like uh, this is a level, you yeah. feel like giving yeah. up. So there are now like two things there. Believe in your potential, and then at the same time don't, don't uh, like surrender. Yeah. yeah. Like I've also gone through many challenges so many. In fact, those challenges are the ones who are, which, they are the ones which has uh, inspired me, in including the, uh, like, watching what my learners are facing and my fellow teachers are facing yeah. here in Kenya and even the whole of Africa, and how they are struggling and their achievements, and what is in store for us as Africa among the young people. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, the best advice we've ever gotten is that we have the potential. We have really, um, that I need to believe in myself, have the potential, and I should never give up. You know, I, um, <clears throat> I remember, because teachers, kids growing up, they remember the one teacher who inspired them. I have one, because I went to a Catholic school yes, as well. Yes, And uh, I remember Father Cormac. His name was Father Cormac O'Brolohorn. Okay. Irish Holy Ghost Fathers. And a lot of kids in our, in our year and even after and before us, they all remember Father Cormac because he left that impression on us. And that's, why I, that's how I remember this prayer of okay. St. Francis. Oh. And it's because of him and you know, the, what he instilled in me. What do you want kids to remember Peter Tabici for? Um, 
dedication. I think passion in what you do. Yeah. And commitment to what you are doing. And that's in collaboration with the other people, my fellow teachers, learners, we have achieved. Yeah. I would like to be remembered for that. By the way, you've been a Franciscan brother for about, what, seven years now? Seven years. What made you join? Um, because I wanted to join um, a community that really um, will, uh, like, it just it is more the kind of the, full of theology, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, like serve God better. Mm -hmm. And how do you serve God better? Uh, you you serve the community. And myself, I wanted to serve the community by yeah. through education, Mze, teaching. Do you agree with this? Do you, do you like what he's doing? This Franciscan Brotherhood. In fact, even when he was in a second school. He used to join brothers in uh, our uh, district, I mean, uh, county school, mm. nearby county school mm. called Kisi County. The school was uh, developed by mi missionaries. And then uh, they were headed by uh, uh, brothers from Holland. I remember one brother from Holland who was called Brother Innocent Koch. They started this, our, that school called Kadnotunga High School. To used to do excellent. So he feasted there. That, I think that was the, my first time to see he was interested because that school used to do excellently well in the whole uh, county and even the, one of the best in Kenya. Yes. So he used to feast those brothers. Uh, so maybe they inspired him. Maybe they inspired him. And uh, when I was teaching, I, w I used not to teach only academic subjects. I used to pastoralize them, teaching them high standard of discipline because the word of God inspired people to have a high standard of discipline. Yeah. And without discipline, no success can come out of man. Absolutely. You know what, Mze, maybe, maybe you should come out of retirement because there's a whole generation of kids out there who are just indisciplined. They have no discipline. They need your discipline. Yes. Would you come out of retirement and go back and teach? Even now, I sometimes visit my local schools yeah. and try to personalize. You should. Yeah. Passion. Passion. You can witness how I was personalizing them. Look at him. Look at him. But at the same time, teaching them mathematics, English, science, yeah. and the geography history. Not only those subjects, I pastoral from the Word of God. Yeah. Your son has a hundred million shillings that he wants to give away. He wants to just give most of it away. Well, what matters most, the way you love God. Because our Lord, I'm not preaching you, but our Lord said, if you want to have life, love God with your whole heart, with your whole mind, with your whole works, and with your, your whole strength. And love your brother as yourself. As yourself. But who is that who said, "Give to Caesar what is Caesar's"? And Jesus. Jesus said. Thank you. He, Jesus said, "Give to Caesar what is Caesar's." To serve God, you have to serve God, and with your fellow man. Like now, our government of Kenya, mm. if you don't pay a, a, a tax, you want to let down the government. So pay a tax. Do what God wants you to do in the church as well as to his people. Sure. Yes. 20% of a hundred million. Okay. Are you already doing calculations? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to read some tweets again. <laughs> I'm trying to do the math in my head. Hey. Derek Mutugi on Twitter says, it is so humbling that there still exists good people in the world and who believe in humanity, and indeed Peter Tabichi is among them. We salute and recognize you, our homegrown hero. Very nice, thank you for that. A lot of sentiments, similar sentiments across the country and the world. Peter Kimeu, 
This man, Peter Tabichi, is a huge inspiration to us all. What a humble man in his noble profession. The Kenyan version of Mother Teresa. May Allah bless you in all your ways. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Our own Mother Teresa. Or oh, Wangari Mathai, for that matter. Hilda Asena. You say he works tirelessly to make sure he lives to his call. Please let him educate the teachers who batter pupils to death and those who molest innocent kids. Congratulations are in order. Wow. Fantastic. Amazing. To a person, everyone is praising this man. Josiah Mkenya says he has inspired those who saw teaching as a third class job in Kenya. He has proved to many that teaching can make one famous. TSC Kenya should reward him immediately. <laughs> TSC Kenya. Hey! Wapi Sosion. Karsh K. From Mr. Tabichi's win, I have learned that every little effort we put in transforming our communities matter. Let's keep pushing. One day they will bear fruit. They may not be as big as his, but one day our actions will pay off. Inspiring a whole bunch of people. Fantastic. Uh, Fadilo, you say, Peter Tabichi has inspired so many upcoming teachers in Kenya. Good. Congratulations. You've done your country an absolute pride. By not only chill, uh, pupils but teachers as well. Jemima Chep Yego, you say, Tabichi, congratulations. You have made us proud. You are a true reflection of the good work teachers do in our country. Your kindness and generosity is hard to find nowadays in people. Keep it up. Those were tweets. Let's go to text messages, SMSs, starting with. Wamboi from Nakuru. Wow, that's an inspiration. Well impacted. I think teaching is a calling. Hongera Mwalimu Peter, you are our hero. Hongera. That's right, Mzez clapping already. Next up is Tito Faraji from Keriko Secondary School. Tito Faraji, you say, I'm very grateful to you, sir, not only for knowledge and skills you lend to me but also for the innovation and courage you equip me with. You are not only my teacher, but also my role model. Until forever, this will always be true. For sure, you deserve a standing ovation. Congratulations, sir. And again, may I say kudos. Your story, Imenipa Motisha. Do you know this guy? Yep. You teach, you teach uh, uh, Tito Faraji? Tito, yes. You, yeah, you know him? Yes. So what do you tell him? Um, thank you. I can just respond by saying that. Thank you. I'm humbled. <laughs> well, we are humbled too, Peter. And I'd like to ask you one small request. Just one small request. Yeah. Your story has to be told and retold and retold. Yeah. You're the only one who can do that. Okay? Yeah. You're the only one. I wrote a book a, long, a while back about my story. Yeah. I want you to get some inspiration and write yours. Thanks. If it'll help. One day when all this fracas and media attention goes away, read that. Okay. Get inspired and write your own story. Mzee Unakubali. Now, I hope because I've seen even myself the verdict, I can uh, uh, just encourage him. In the future, let me let him be the best author of books, okay. so that he can live behind it. Like now, I used to say the, to read the book called "Suffering Without Bitterness." Suffering without by bitterness Mse, by Mse, the late Mzek Jomo Kenyatta. Correct. I was inspired by that. Is that right? Then I, I read another book called "Tom Boyer, Freedom and After." Mm. I, I remember history of those who were struggling for our liberation of our country, Kenya. Yes. Tom Boya, Mse Chomo Kenyatta, he suffered without bitterness and he persevered. You have heard him telling him, telling you that he never 
lose heart whenever you want to do something. You, if you want to achieve something, don't lose heart. Didn't he tell you that? Yes, he did. So even Mzee Jomo Kenyatta did not lose heart. He persevered and then Kenya, our country, got independence. So I was inspired by that book, Suffering Without Bitterness. Mm -hmm. So I also advise him, go oh, and be a, a good author in the future, from now, even from now. So that this, those are the things that will say, give you history, will make you be remembered. Be, uh, people like uh, in America, Abraham Lincoln, they are remembered. There you go. Their, their books are written down. Yeah. 150 yeah. years later, yes. they still remember yeah. Abraham Lincoln. J.F. Kennedy from America. They are remember. Kennedy. They wrote down books. Yeah. Okay. Our African country here, Tom Boyer, wrote a book. Jomo Kenyatta, Kenyatta, Musee Kenyatta, wrote a book. Okay. Nelson Mandela. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Nelson Nelson Mandela wrote books. So you will do the same. Thank you. Still taking advice from the old man, huh? <laughs> That's great. You get the last word. What do you tell people out there, the people watching you right now? What do you tell them? Uh, let's believe in our youths. Let's invest in them. Everyone, boys and girls. And let, let us encourage them, like girls, get into STEM uh, subjects. I, I'm particularly talking about science and technology because uh, that's the way forward to find the neighbors as Africans get solutions that will uh, really address the challenges which the continent is facing, like food shortage, we have uh, water shortage, um, climatic change, name them. Absolutely. Peter Tabichi, we're proud of you. Congratulations. Lawrence Tabichi, thank you for raising this boy the way you did. We owe you a debt of gratitude as a nation. Sir, I attribute this uh, well-being, not me alone. I think the Lord Jesus put his hand in. Because I always pray before I do it. Even my teaching profession, yeah. I used to pray before I teach. When I pray, that is the secret I learned from brothers, from mm. Kandonotunga Musojo and other, books, other schools. Yeah. So I pray before I start doing work. Always pray? Yeah, I always pray. I think he followed my example. I think he did. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I'm sure there's not a dry eye in the house. Fantastic show. These are the kinds of programs we should do more of, I know. Less politics, more inspiration. But it doesn't come every day, folks. And when it does come, we are the first to always get it. Thanks so much for being a part of this show. And thanks so much for... Um, for enjoying and appreciating this 36-year-old man who's made this country and his continent so proud. Tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., join me and Professor Hamo on Hot 96, the hottest breakfast show in all of Africa. Join us then. But remember, every Wednesday, it's all about the three letters on the keyboard that follow each other, J-K-L, where we bring you shows that you don't get anywhere else and that are always live. Thanks for being a part of the show. Good night. Good luck. God bless this incredible, incredible Tabichi family. <laughs> <laughs>